नमस्ते एंड वेलकम बैक टू सेकेंड एपिसोड ऑफ फ्लॉटर कैलेंडर ट्यूटोरियल द अपडेटेड वर्जन द न्यू लेटेस्ट वर्जन इन पार्ट वन वी वेर एबल टू एड द कैलेंडर कस्टोमाइज इट एंड वी वेर एबल टू क्रिएट आवर इवेंट्स क्रूड सो दैट वी आर एबल टू एड न्यू इवेंट इट इट एक्जिस्टिंग इवेंट डिलीट एंड व्यू दी व्यू एंड डिलीट दी इवेंट्स नाउ we will see how we can show the event markers in our calendar so that whichever date has the events it will show some kind of markers or indication that those days have events for that as we are using table calendar let's go to the documentation of table calendar and if we see the features there we see that dynamic events that means we can pass in our events dynamically so let's go down let's see somewhere so holidays we don't want to pass holidays right now so we don't have events option here however we can go to their repository and see the example so if we see the g fear whichever dates has the event that has event markers even with the number of events so this has four markers that means there are four events on that date so let us see how it is working let's go to example leave main dot dot file here if we see we have we must have events list somewhere here so we have events list so if we see the event list here we have like we have a map the data structure of events is a map and the key is a date key is the date for which the event is okay key should be date and event is an array of dynamic objects so the events that we are receiving from fire story is simply a list of events however we need to convert or map that into this map so that we can display it in our calendar and to pass the events in our calendar we can simply pass it in the events parameter if we format it in this data format if we make a map of events where key is the date and value is the list of events for that date then we can simply pass that into our calendar so let us see how to do that in this episode if we go to our home page we can see that our events is listed using this stream builder however our calendar is above the stream builder so that we are we will not be able to pass in our events to our calendar so what we can do is we can simply copy this card that holds our calendar let me cut it and paste it inside so stream builder so in stream builder when a snapshot has data we are returning list view let us wrap this list view with a column and above list view let us paste our calendar so now we have both our calendar and our events and we can remove this outside column let's remove this widget so i have created few more events for few more dates so that we'll be able to see the events marker in our calendar now in order to pass in events to our calendar let us create some setups so first we need our events in the format of a map where key is date time and the value is list dynamic so for our case it is list of app event let's name it grouped events that we can pass to our calendar and let us also create a function called group events 
and this should receive a list of event first let us initialize group events as a empty map then events dot for each this is our event and here we'll create a date date and this is for the key so utc here we are using utc because table calendar returns selected date as utc in this format so event dot date dot year month day and 12 and finally what we can do is underscore group events date if this equals null then we can initialize grouped events date as an empty list and finally we can push grouped events date dot add event so we can add the event in that list so this will create our grouped events in the format required by the table calendar finally we can pass this grouped events inside table calendar so in the table calendar we can oh sorry first we need to call this when we receive a list of events let us call group events and pass in the events now our events is grouped we can simply pass the grouped events in the events parameter so here grouped events once we pass this we should be able to see the marker and we can see that december 5 has four events or four or more events 23rd has one 29 has one 30 has one 31 has one and if we go to november november 18 has one event okay so our events marker are displayed now what we want to do is whenever our date is selected we want to display the events of that particular date and for that we can simply initialize a variable here called initial date so here let us initialize a selected date so selected date equals calendar controller dot selected day now we can get the selected events as selected events equals grouped events selected date and if this is null and empty list okay finally in our list view instead of passing all the events we can pass in selected events dot length and here use selected events index so when i tap this i'm not seeing the updated events this is because whenever the selected date updates we need to rebuild by calling set state so in calendar we have another parameter called on day selected here we get selected date and also selected events on day selected we get date events and also holidays so here we can simply call set state so whenever i select a new date set state is called and I see the events for that date listed below here. See, if I tap 18, I get November 18th event. If I tap December 5, I get the event for December 5. And let's add an event. So today is December 7. Let's add new event here. 
test December 7 and let's save it. It is displayed and let us hot restart. So if we hot restart initially this December 7 is selected and we should be able to see the date for event for December 7. So it's working. See this is how we can display events marker as well as display the events whenever it is tapped. Let us also show the selected date at the top so we know which state is selected and we are viewing the event for which state. So above list view let us add date format Okay, we see Tuesday 29 December. Let's style it. So, cross axis alignment. Start. And let's style this text a bit. Let's give it a padding. Wrap with padding. 8 padding uh, only. Let's say only. Left. 8 or uh, let's say 12 and top 8 and let's give it a style text theme dot headline 6 okay this is our selected date so that we can see this is December 5 December 7, December 23rd. This is how it is working. Thank you everyone for watching this tutorial. In this episode, we learned how to display events marker and whenever a day or date is selected, list the events of that particular date. In the next episode, we will learn how to optimize Firestore query. Right now, Though we are viewing only December month here, even the events of November that we have added is loaded. And later, when you have a full-blown application with thousands or ten thousands of events, you do not want to load them all at once. You only need to load of the current month or currently visible date and time in the calendar. So if we are viewing just two weeks like this, then we can only load events for these two weeks and whenever we move on to next two weeks then we can load the event for that two weeks so in the next episode we will learn how to optimize our firestore query using the calendar visible dates so that we only load the events that are actually required and not all the events thank you everyone see you again in the next episode